All right, look at that. I'm bringing myself in tonight. Welcome, everybody. Our director, Katie, is out sick. Shout out to her if she is watching at home. This is another edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live. I'm JG Pasterjack. Thank you for being here tonight. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, you do not exist tonight because Facebook is no, no low contendere this evening. Uh, so if you're maybe watching a rebroadcast of this sometime, you tried to watch on Facebook, sorry. But here's some cool news. If you were to have texted GRM Live, G-R-M-L-I-V-E, to 31996, we could have told you earlier in the day, hey, Facebook is all hosed up. We're just probably going to be on YouTube tonight. So that is a great way to get updates about the show, about what's coming up, about schedule changes, about guests, about cool stuff going on. So do that for me, would you? GRM Live to 31996. We're never going to sell that. We're never going to send you commercial messages. It's just updates about the show. All right, tonight, we, I, we have a very cool show tonight. We are doing something we don't normally do, and that is being classy for once and cleaning an automobile. We're going to be bringing on our friend Tim McNair from, um, what's the name of your company again? Grand Prix Concourse Prep bringing him on to show us a few secrets of the trade, how to prepare a car for the lawn at Pebble Beach, or even for the uh, the autocross course in Lincoln, Nebraska, whether whether you are a, a concourse show prep or whether you just want to get your daily driver cleaned up or whether you want to take your race car and make it a little less embarrassing, we are going to show you how to do that. Before we do that, let me ask a favor of everybody, and that is that you give a little thought to the folks that make this show possible. Talking about our friends probably right down here somewhere in this area, our friends from CRC Industries. CRCindustries.com on the web, even better. Check them out at a major retailer near you. Before the show, uh, David Wallens, who's over there doing our social media tonight, went around and cleaned his glasses, his, uh, his laptop. We cleaned our camera lens with uh, CRC's electronics um, screen cleaner. It is great stuff. And it, it, it tells me that CRC is making more awesome stuff than just brake clean, even though brake clean is pretty awesome. But if you're at a retailer, if you're buying automotive chemicals, grab that CRC stuff, getting a great product, also giving a little bit back to the community that we enjoy ourselves in. And also our friends at Coney Shocks, coney-na.com on the web. I, I, am, I am wringing my hands around the necks of those guys to get some discount codes out of them. Should have those for you within a couple weeks. And we're going to have tech tips from our friends at Coney for, uh, for you guys um, right here on the show. All right, uh, so we are mostly looking at our friends on YouTube tonight. I see, actually I see several of our regular, um, regular Facebook people have moved over to YouTube. Thank you for making the trip and we're sorry, we can't control what, uh, you know, when, when Mark Zuckerberg eats some bad Szechuan chicken somewhere and trips over a wire in, in Facebook headquarters. We can't control that, but thanks for making the journey over to YouTube. Let me bring on our friend Tim McNair. Welcome, welcome to Ormond Beach, my friend. It's been a while. Hey, JJ, how and you doing? You are just. Uh, he was worried what we were gonna actually do when we introduce each other, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I gave him, I gave him the second hand in there. Did you like that? I liked it. Yeah, the, the, uh, the actually, it's the best handshake I've ever it, had. It is. <laughs> yeah, really, really bonded there. It's great. It's, 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 it's not that kind of show. <laughs> uh, Tim. You just came off a weekend uh, prepping cars at the Amelia Island Concours. You have prepped cars that have gone on the show field at Pebble Beach. Uh, you, you have, uh, I'm, a, I'm a simple man that, that uh, you know, has tire marks and cone marks all, all, over, all over the front it's of the car. It's all good. But you have, you have done amazing things. You have taken cars of ours that we did not think would, would be any better than, than they were and made them amazing. So let's start with a little bit about you. How did you come to be a a master detailer, or what, what would you even call yourself at this point? Well, I don't even know whether, I, I, I just clean cars for a living, that's really what it comes yeah. out to. I just clean better ones than most people. Um, I started doing this uh, about 35 years ago. Um, I had a friend of mine that owned a detail shop and uh, would come down and help him out. Uh, his father, uh, I'll give you the, the, the Reader's Digest version basically, so he, um, his father was a banker in Philadelphia, and he would pick up his, his father's car and his friend's cars and stuff like that at the train station, bring them back to his house and clean them and prep them, so when they came back from the train, the cars were ready to go. But because they were bankers, it was all Mercedes, Porsche, Ferrari, whatever. So every day we'd have something cool to work on. I realized then that, you know, this is, this is actually kind of cool. I didn't mind doing it, and the results are always so satisfying that, you know, it looked amazing. But every once in a while, we would get a car in around July 
that I wasn't able to touch. And that was usually a car that was going to Pebble Beach. And uh, the first chance I actually had to work on a, on a collector car that was uh, prepping for Pebble Beach was an XK120 Coupe, a black one. And uh, the car, I was finally able to clean the undercarriage with them, and that's where I kind of learned my chops. Anyway, as we moved on to a couple of years later, I ended up being in the, um, in the restoration world. I did 300 SLs, uh, did all the final assembly work, and took the car to the show afterwards with a restoration shop out of New Jersey. And then um, I've done everything in the car business, literally. Awesome. But I've always done this on the side, and I uh, worked a lot with the Ferrari Club. Um, and uh, it, uh, probably my big break, as, as you would call it, I ended up with a client that had um, the best Ferraris. This was late 80s, and he had um, he was able to get um, a 280 a GTO. He had a Boxer, he wow. had a Daytona, and just a quick funny story. So the guy, the guy, uh, I was introduced to him, and the first time I met the guy, he's he's got like one of these super pullover hairdos, sans belt pants, yes. and like Velcro shoes. I like this guy. The older guy. And he says, can you come look at my car? I'm like, sure, I'll come look at it. And he's had a brand new boxer. And this thing was shiny, like literally just off the boat. And they went through the, uh, at that time they were gray market. So they had all the bumpers off, so everything looked back to normal. And he says, can you take care of this for me? I said, sure, no problem. He said, well, I have some other cars too. Do you want to see them? I'm like, okay. I'm thinking, here we go. It's going to be like a you know 308 or something. Yeah. No, he takes me over to a Daytona Spider. Oh, wow. Which was pretty much the holy grail yeah. at the time. And... Um, so I made a connection with this guy. He had two lifts in his garage. He had the full USOG uh, F1 toolboxes. He had skylights, heated, air-conditioned garages, things I've never seen in my life. Yeah. He, hardcore, though. He had a 1,000-gallon Cam 2 fuel pump. Wow. So he would take care of all the cars. He always had a place to fill them up and it, on the Chesapeake Bay. So every morning, you know, we'd go down to work on the cars all day, and you'd be looking out over the bay, playing with Ferraris. Didn't suck. So he ended up with about 15 cars, and I went to the Nationals with him, and then I, I realized I wasn't making any money doing this on my own. So <laughs> got a real job for a little while, and then about 12 years ago, I started GP Concours. That took me to uh, all the best places. I mean, I've been around the world working on cars. I've worked on truly the best cars known to man. Cool. Well, we, t tonight you get to work on uh, one, a phenomenal of, the, car, one of the, the best cars. Porsche ever built. This is a 2001 Boxster yep. that we just picked up, uh, 65,000 miles, $8,200, and we've not really touched it much yet in, in knowing that you were coming to town. So we want you to show us a few things on, on the car tonight. And I, you know, I, I, looking at it, I've got some real specific questions about how are you going to solve some of the problems here. <laughs> Before we do that, though, let's take a look at, at your, your table. This is, this is your traveling kit, I, I guess. You, you don't worry about walking us through every single product, but just sure. take us through some of the broad categories of stuff you want to put in your kit yeah. as you're as you're building your own sort of detail kit. So basically, this is this is just part of the the kit that I take with me. I have a couple of different cases that I use that can be shipped anywhere. Um, any kind of aerosol, though, I have to uh, drop ship typically or pick it up locally. So one thing I want to explain to people is that uh, everything I have here is stuff that you can buy over the counter. Um, if I travel somewhere I'm out in California, I go to Kansas or whatever, and uh, let's say one of these bottles breaks inside my luggage, I need to replace it right away. So I, I'll be able to go out to AutoZone, Pep Boys, one of those places, Advance, whatever it may be, and pick up what I need and, and start back to normal again. Um, so there is some esoteric stuff in here, but there's a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, a couple of my favorite products, the, 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 the uh, Best of Show Detailer is phenomenal. I use the Honda spray, which we'll talk a lot about today. This, this stuff, I so I actually discovered this stuff <laughs> yeah. by accident many years ago. You, you can only get it at Honda motorcycle dealers. Correct, and everyone will try part. to sell you another product. Yeah, the Honda Pro Honda is the only it one to get. It is fantastic. And and, it, does, it does everything. And six bucks. Yeah, you know it's it, it's just amazing. It really is. But there's a lot of things. My specialty though are the the tools. You know, you can make. I can use whether it's Meguiar's or Griot's or Eagle One. Or, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I can make make do with just about everything. Yeah. But because it's with the tools that I use, you know, the the type of foam pads I use or a buffer or whatever. But the, you know, things like this are the most important when you have brushes that are all these weird shapes and, uh, of course, the inevitable bamboo stick, which we'll get to later, and you know, little brushes. But that's the stuff that makes your life easy. And again, none of that stuff is stuff that, that uh, I mean, this is literally a brush that looks like you cut it down and taped it up. Basically. Yeah, it's gaffer tape. Yeah, so it, it's it's just 
techniques that you, you've developed over, yep. over years of doing this stuff? Very simple stuff. It's uh, just a standard paintbrush and like the skewers are you know, 100 for two bucks. So if I'm just an average dirt bag and I don't have any of this <laughs> stuff, uh, where do I, if you, if you were telling me, okay, you need to get your life in order, start cleaning your cars a little bit, where do I start on this stuff? What's, what's the first things I start collecting from this pile? Well, in, uh, let me just also preface this by saying that uh, one thing I never do uh, on these cars, most of the cars I work on are very, very expensive and um, they don't take kindly to water. So I never wash a car. So let me just say that uh, a lot of people like to wash their car and I encourage that. You could get you know basic car wash soaps and stuff like that and sponges, however you like to do it. Me, if I get a car like this, I'll use a quick detailer most of the time to clean the car first. So this, this one is uh, right here. Yeah, so yeah, like, so. this is best to show, this is Griot's. And, um, and that stuff's available from AutoZone? Or, yeah, you, you know. can get it just about everywhere. Um, on mostly auto parts stores and directly online, Amazon, all that stuff. But this, this is the key to it, is having the right towel. This one is a, a very thick microfiber towel. And when you're working on a car that's dirty like ours, uh, you spray and wipe and this really traps a lot of the dirt and won't scratch the paint. I know everybody says the same thing to me. Don't you worry about scratching the paint. Well, no, I don't. Not anymore. Because awesome. you use the right stuff. Somebody was asking about the, uh, yep. the, the, the Honda stuff again. Yes. And, and yeah, this is, it's a Honda spray cleaner and polish. I, th I think I've actually bought this on Amazon before. You can, but, but, but yeah, you, you can Honda look. motorcycle stores only. You walk can't into, get it at the car store. Exactly. Walk into any Honda motorcycle dealership and they'll have it and it's actually cheaper than, than um, yeah, it, I order it by online. the case. The guys know yeah. me when I walk in there. It's like, yeah, yeah how many you need? You know? And it's it's fantastic. I mean, it, it is. It, it, it's a if if there's any hidden gems up here. You I know, think, we'll I think put this, this in action one. in a couple minutes. The best thing yeah. to use it for, uh, just uh, as an example of this, would be like the wheels, the rockers, and especially inside door jams. Spray, wipe, done, and makes your life easy. I like things that so, are easy. And we've gotten a couple of questions on, on YouTube already yep. about, about like cone marks and tire marks and what if it's a rally cross car. And Not a problem. I, I, I'm definitely going to deal with that because that, that is, that's where I spend my time. Well, but there's an we'll, old autocrosser and yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do that a bit. Okay. So let's, yep. let's start, start with, with this thing. And, and we're, 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 we're going to do a show on the Boxster probably in a few weeks once we learn a little more about it and ascertain its condition. But where, where do you, if somebody just brought this car home, hey, Tim, I've got, I got this great car. I want you to take a look at it. I just bought it. How do you start to evaluate a car for what it's going to need and figure out a, a plan of action for it? Well, uh, I much prefer to see the car in, in daylight. That's the best. Uh, let me start with that first, because the better the lighting, the more you're going to see, especially with cars that are silver. Sometimes you may see where panels don't match and things like that. So let's just say this is, this is how I got it. Uh, typically, what I do is do a complete walk around a car, just as I, uh, if I were judging it. Uh, I do work as a, as a judge with the Ferrari Club and things like that, so I have this sort of mental uh, process in my mind. So I take a lap around the car, I look at things like panel gaps, make sure the doors are closed, make sure that, as in this case, the wheels are completely filthy and, and probably haven't been cleaned in a long time. We've got, like, right here, we've got a big separation between the bumper and the, the inner fender liner. And the calipers are starting to show a lot of wear. They, uh, all the powder coat is peeling off of them. But small price to pay when you're not paying a lot of money for the car. Right. And a lot of the stuff is simply cosmetic. So just you know, just take that in mind that it's really kind of easy to fix. Well, you say that, but where do you draw the line between oh, that's a scratch that I can deal with on a detailing level, and oh, this is this is past the point of detailing. Yeah. And it's, 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 Unfortunately, it's a game day call. Okay. You know, it's one of those things where you actually, uh, I, I always err on the side of caution. I use a very uh, sort of a, a mild polish first or a mild compound before uh, when I attack a scratch or a chip or something like that. So you use the, the most mild thing and build up. If it gets to a point where it's too big, too deep, something like that, where I, it would require paint work, then you pretty much know that going in. A lot of the stuff we see on this car, little stone chips and things, okay. they're easily repairable. But, you know, if you, if you get a pretty deep scratch, I can take some of it out, a lot of it out. Um, especially I have all different kinds of sandpaper. I have them in there. Uh, I have sandpapers up to 12,000 grit. Oh, wow. So it feels like a piece of velvet. <laughs> and it really does. It's really cool. But, uh, and, and I can mostly work that, but it, it's sort of a unique situation in general terms. Yeah. Most of these, in this case, we've got a lot of hairline scratches and you can hear, hopefully you can hear this. It sounds like sandpaper on this car right now because it really needs to be clay barred and clean. Yeah, and you, you can actually see if, if you yeah, look closer, there's just a lot of, a lot of little- yeah, know, There's a lot of funk in the paint. Yeah. Scratches <laughs> in there. Um, yeah, back here especially. So 
as a as a detail guy yourself, when you're looking at a, at a car, so what if I'm I'm somewhere evaluating a used car I might want to buy, and you know, uh, evil Tim McNair got to it bef before before I got to see it. Can, is is a good detailer that approaches a used car? Can they hide things yes. that maybe I wouldn't be able to to ascertain the true condition of? Yeah, be careful. Be careful of the very simple things. Um, look at the mileage on the car. There should be certain things that will tip you off right away. Let's say this car had eighty thousand miles, but it has new pedal pads. Really, you know, as you know, pedals wear, and they'll wear in a certain pattern. And if someone replaced those, that's going to be your first clue that maybe that not, may not be correct. The other thing is, you know, it's mostly in the interior. Like, uh, any detailer can make this car shine. Yeah. That's, that's really not a problem. There are thousands of videos online on how to polish paint. Pretty simple stuff, and there's all kinds of things with that. But what you want to look for is mostly in here. Okay. Because this is where they fail. It's bad. Uh, look for bad, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Redies on seats, uh, cheap dye looks like uh, like a house paint, and it goes on really thick and heavy. Look for carpet that's been repainted. That's a big thing. In fact, uh, I think I, I don't know if I brought it today, but I had carpet. I picked up carpet paint for this, which is kind of funny. But they can they can dust on this color of paint. If you feel it, it feels really crusty. Yeah, that uh, means it's that's been, been sprayed. Yeah. Okay. So then that covers a multitude of sins. You know, especially back here where you're seeing a lot of sun fade and that sort of thing. So they try to make that look better. But really, it's old school recon stuff, and it's it's not going to last. Awesome. Also, look for over. I'm sorry. No, not, go ahead. Look for really overly shiny stuff. That's a big. They're just try, they're trying so, to impress you. They're slimed to... up the wheels. Slimed up the wheel wells. They may be dirty, but they're incredibly shiny because they took a can of silicone spray and blew it in there, <laughs> and they look dark black. You know, nice and and it, or like in here, like the trim or the wiper arms. That's the kind of stuff that that they overdo most of the time. That should be a clue that maybe there's some underlying factor there that you're not aware of. Cool. All right. So so let's let's get into some hands-on stuff here. Where where would you start with with a car like this? Obviously, you said. I mean, and you can you can feel the condition of that paint. I mean, it, sure. it, there's there's lots of little ding like dots of of substance in there. And so let's just start with the basics. So again, I never wash a car, so I always uh, I use a ton of this. Uh, any of the quick detailers or any of these quick deals detail sprays. This time we have. Creo's best to show detailer. Surprisingly, this is really nice stuff. It adds a lot of depth and gloss. When we did a comparison a couple of months ago, or about a year ago now, for yeah. uh, the Speed Shine product and uh, Meguiar's Ultimate came out to be the two best that we tried. And we basically did the same process on a five series that my friend didn't wash for a year. So it worked out really well. So you, you said you never wash a car. Yep. Talk about that a little bit. Why, why not? So, uh, best example I can give you is at Cavallino this year, I took a, this sounds crazy, but we had a 1958 Ferrari Testarossa. So here's a car that has no door gaskets, it has no roof, it has no, um, it's uh, in round numbers, $30 million these days. Yeah, you know. So, you know, if I put a hose on that and fill up the interior <laughs> with water, you can imagine what happens. Yeah. The same thing with the engine compartment, you want to stay far away from dousing it. Or even in more simple terms, just washing this. For me, I can't stand opening the hood and opening the deck or something like that, and there's still soapy water in there in the corners. It's just too much, too much to go back and check and redo. I'd rather just wipe and clean and it's done. I know where I am than have to go back and continually dry and it's just too much ag. And I can I can wash this whole car in 10 minutes with this versus an hour because I had to dry it and everything else. And with the, the proper softness of towel and the, and the proper lubricating exactly. um, detail spray, you're in good shape. Stuff's All right. cheap, yeah. you know, so load it up. It's right. just that simple. Okay, so, so, so basically so I just sprayed it. this and wiped it. You can feel it's already starting to get better. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. it is. And uh, we're going to use a, uh, I used to use a lot of clay bars. I still do because the clay bar, you can, uh, you can break it down and make little spots and, and do small areas like this. Whereas now uh, these big surfaces, I use some of these clay pads. So it's basically like a rubberized pad. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it, it feels like um, like toolbox liner. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's got a little grip to it. And then uh, basically it's the same process. So I'll spray it down. And is, is that reusable? Like once, yeah. once we do this, I can keep using this? Yeah, and again, if you ever drop it, throw it away. <laughs> but if, uh, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, okay. just like the clay bar. But when you put it on, you can actually you can hear it. It just sounds like sandpaper as we're oh, going yeah. over it. But uh, there's really not much to this. 
So always, when, when using a clay bar or any kind of polish or any kind of towel or any kind of thing when you wipe these cars, always use short strokes so you're only going about a foot at a time and only go in straight lines in the direction of the car. And the okay. reason for all this is if you do pick up a scratch, a stone or something like that, you're fixing a scratch that's this long instead of this long. And that's a big difference. And it's not swirly. Exactly, or, yeah. which is impossible to fix. Yeah. So, you know, again, err on the side of caution. But look at, it's pretty dramatic here from what we can see. Not just wow. not just yeah. in smoothness, but look how shiny it is. That's fantastic. That's a clay bar. That's all we did. So you said don't drop that. Right. Which which is good good advice. But when you're getting set up to detail a car, we, we have a table here, but... It sounds like you should prep your environment as, as well. Yes. So you have, like you're not putting stuff on the ground, you're not setting stuff on the car. <laughs> what, what, is your, what does your environment look like when you're, when, you're, when you're getting ready to do a car? Well, uh, I'm very fortunate because most of the places I work on, the, the garages are better than my home. A lot of them have white marble floors or polish or they're finished shops with painted floors. Uh, but in light of that, I, uh, one of the things I always carry with me, and it probably doesn't really apply to everybody, but I have a little Hazette toolbox, a little tool caddy, okay. like you would use a shower caddy yeah. kind of thing. And that's what I take around with me. One of the little expanding ones? Well, I have, I have that as well, but it's, oh, that's uh, a very expensive yeah, toy. Is. This is uh, just like a shower caddy, okay. except it's cool blue plastic and it says yeah. Hazette on it. But you can put, I put all my chemicals in that and I can work my way around the car. A lot of times I go to Harbor Freight or something and get uh, tarps or the uh, moving pads and just lay them out and I can sit on the moving pad and work my way around the car okay. if I don't have a lift. But so, a lot of my guys have lifts, so. Awesome. Okay, so the, actually the Fender looks a thousand percent better already. Yep. If it was me, I'd walk away and throw it on Auto Trader right <laughs> yeah. now. But obviously you're, you're a fancier lad than I am. So it, it is, what have we done to this Fender at this point besides okay, so taking some of those Basically we removed a lot out. of the surface contaminants, a lot of stuff that was stuck in here, whether it was, you know, fallout or or uh, tree sap or whatever it may be that was stuck on the paint that made it sound like sandpaper. Um, so from this process here, this particular car needs a little bit more help. I would probably use a light compound on this now and start bringing the paint back up. You see a lot of hologram effect, which is, as you can see around the, when the light hits it, it sort of looks like this. Okay. And it would eliminate that. And then we go to a polish and then typically a, a wax after that. So when you say a light compound, is that going to be with a, with a machine or by hand? I always use machines. Let's let's give it a shot. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's that's why we're here, brother. Exactly. So I never uh, I used to do things by hand, but life's too short. Yes. And with the tonight we're just going to use uh, this is uh, the the little Grio buffer. This is uh, an orbital buffer. So basically the difference is these orbitals are great for home use. You can use it on just about everything, and it's really hard to burn the paint with something like this. Old oh, school. I, I think I could manage. Oh no, I, I bet you can. I'll make you. I'm going to put you to the test in a minute. So. This uh, moves, uh, instead of in a standard rotary pattern, it's got a little hop to it. Um, it's not an old school rotary buffer that burns paint, makes DeLoreans out of everything. This is the type that you can pretty much, it replicates the sort of uh, doing it by hand. That's, okay. That was the original intent. So we're using a, what they call a compound pad, which is a hard foam pad. You can feel that. It's a lot. Oh, it's, it's, it's almost like seat foam. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty hard. But it actually has some, some like, it feels like a, like a memory pad mattress topper, mm. I think. Yeah, and it, it does have a little bit of that. In fact, it's kind yeah. of funny. But as we move through the, uh, through the scale of foam pads, this one, it starts out hard and then use softer and softer pads as you move out. So how much are you putting on? I mean, you're putting um, uh, probably a, a quarter size. Yeah, just kind of smeared around. So what we want to do, is uh, they call it buttering the pad. So basically we're getting to this point, but we'll use the car to smear it to get the rest of the effect. So basically smear it around by hand, get it all kind of. And so th this is what we're starting with, uh, the Griot's complete compound. So how, yeah. how much, how much uh, abrasive is actually, actually in here? This is a relatively mild compound compared to some of the ones I use like after sanding or something like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty harmless. Okay. So you haven't even turned the machine on yet. You've you've distributed the the, the goo exactly. Fairly, and if you notice, it's fairly even on the bottom of the pad. That's what's key. Okay. And then we're going to turn it on. We're going to start out at one. Okay. We're going to spread the material around, and then we'll increase it to about three, three and a half, and see what it does.
So basically the process, very light pressure, okay. back and forth, up and down to prevent any kind of swirl marks. And is your, is, is your pressure on the, on the pad, are you, are you, just, are you right distributing here. the pressure over the entire pad? Or yes. Are you using the leading edge? Nope, always uh, using, the using pad? yeah, and keeping the pad as flat as possible. Uh, I was kind of speeding through this a little bit, but typically I like a very low uh, hand speed. So you're moving it nice and gentle. We'll do that with the with the polish more than the compound. We got a couple questions from our uh, our, our YouTube crowd over here. Thanks for sure, um, fire thanks away. For asking. I don't, want, I don't want to switch gears too much, but before they disappear, um, any comments on using quick detailer versus waterless spray-on car washes? Our friend Timo wants to know. Yeah, uh, it, it's uh, very much a similar process and a similar product. Okay. There are spray-on car washes that probably have a better effect on things that, that on cars that are much dirtier than this. So again, a lot of the stuff um, came out of necessity with the water restrictions in California. Yeah. They, they all, a lot of uh, places out there went to waterless car washes, and and uh, that stuff's great. There's about I don't know, a thousand different varieties, just yeah. as there is a thousand ways of polishing. But just to, uh, for general purposes, either one will work. I like a quick detailer or, or you know, one that's made specifically for this purpose. And then William asks about, uh, what about Iron X or a similar product after claying? Uh, well, it depends on the process. I think Iron X uh, makes a lot of sense if you've got a problem with uh, someone that parks their car in Detroit or someplace near a train track. What is, I, I, I'm not familiar so with So iron fallout's a big thing that we're seeing more and more of. Okay. You, you can, it's most prominent on, on lighter colored cars. That's where you really see okay. it. But it is, it's just iron chips that have fallen into the paint. Oh, and, and they start to oxidize. Start to oxidize, yeah. So there's actually fallout removers and iron removers and things like that. Here in Florida with a boxer, we don't really have to worry about this too much because he doesn't, this was never exposed to that. So unless you park it behind a blacksmith shop in Florida. No, it's uh, more importantly, the, uh, you leave a train station. Oh, um, well, yeah. Yeah, or uh, we see a lot of cars that are transported by trains. So modern cars, so a lot of brand new cars have this issue. So use it if, you, if, you, if you're if you in an environment You'll with, see with a lot of iron yeah, yeah, so after you clay bar the car, if you still see dark spots, then yes, you'll see it and it should be, uh, that's when you want to attack that. Oh yeah, and uh, somebody asked about uh, you know, of course, of course, brake pads. Will, I guess do 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 the same thing or, uh, or that's to a, a point, except thing. it's a it's a different type of thing. That brake pad dust usually is is already uh, it, it doesn't eat into the paint the same way that I've seen. It does on the wheels. Yeah. But then we're looking at a different process entirely. And it, actually, this is this is a, a fantastic question. Uh, who, who asked? Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, Ed uh, w wants to know. You, you've stressed a few times that the good microfiber towels are important. How do you clean all, all of these, these, these products? It's actually pretty simple. Um, I clean them at home in a, my regular washer, and I actually uh, probably shouldn't do this, but I throw my foam pads in with my microfiber towels. But you don't put anything in but microfiber towels. And just, it's common sense, okay? The microfiber towels that you use to clean the wheels, that you use to clean the undercarriage or whatever, if they're spent, they're spent. Throw them away. But typically, you know, my wax towels all go in with the wax towels. I put a little OxyClean that works really well. And there's also a microfiber wash that I use. Oh, very cool. And a lot of everybody makes it. Places like Auto Geek and stuff like that. You're just that not stuff. putting it in with your gym socks? and. Uh, and typically not. Wax, Actually, yeah. no. And, and only microfiber with microfiber. You don't want to put anything else in there. Okay. All right. So we've, we've, we've compounded it. You're, you're, you're removing the yeah, compound so we with the microfiber a quick, towel. This is just a quick cut with the compound. So it's getting even smoother and cleaner. And then what we'll do next is uh, we'll, we'll, we're will we going to change the pad out. It's getting to the point now where me touching it actually lowers the value. Of it, <laughs> yeah. so. Nice. It, 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 that does feel very nice. So we started with the compounding pad, and then we're going to move up to the polishing pad. So you're using a, a new pad for each step here, but I think probably because you had them. What it, What is the service life of, of these pads, and how do you know when they're Actually, done? it's pretty good. Uh, I've had some for up to a year. It depends on the pad. Um, but in this case, we because we're changing materials, we change pads. Okay. We're now going from that hard foam pad to it's much very, softer pad. Very soft. I could. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is more of a pillow than, this, than a mattress topper. This is the step that sort of uh, makes the paint. So uh, the compound usually leaves swirls and scratches and l may leave some marks in the paint. The polish step is usually where it really starts to. Yeah. Now so, I, I'm so using this, this is something different than, than that. that yeah. Like so uh, see, Chris, if you zoomed in on this right here, that'd be like a terms of service violation, I think. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So that's the this is uh, again Griot's. This is stuff I had with me this time. So we have complete compound, complete polish. Okay. They're in their basic line. So this is an even milder. Yeah, and this stuff abrasive. is good for any kind of paint. So you can use it on clear coats. You can use it on everything except uh, the matte finish. Course. Are there are there 
certain thing, certain types of compound you want to use on certain colors, or yeah. if, somebody, if somebody's trying to sell you that, are they snake oil in you? What's going on? Well, no, actually, there are certain, there are other compounds and polishes that I use that go beyond the normal stuff. Uh, as an example, modern Mercedes are equipped with a, a ceramic-based paint, so I use. Um, a company called Menzerna, who's out of Germany, that uh, makes a polish specifically for that super hard ceramic base paint. So it really depends. But typically, the cars I work on, I do very few modern cars. Uh, I have done, except for I do a lot of McLaren F1s. Okay. But mostly everything is um, is vintage or restored. Okay. So they're painted in modern paints, but they're not like doing a new car at all. So this this paint, I, I would probably call it dirty, but not not necessarily faded as, as, as yeah. such. If, if you did have something that was worse than this, like somebody uh, on just asked about paint that started to oxidize a little bit, started to chalk up a little bit. Yeah, the compound will still be your friend. Okay. And, and again, I'd use the same process. I'd certainly would start with a clay bar because even though it's it's uh, oxidized, you still it actually will pick up a lot more dirt. Okay. So we want to. Use a clay bar regardless. Again, short strokes. Make sure you don't pick up a lot of dirt. And then go right to a compound. So you're and still doing the same thing. You might just have to do it a little extra Yeah, extra either, step or either extra. do it twice or go to a little bit heavier cut. Now, if you go to a heavier cut, of course, you run the risk of burning things. Right. So. And, you're, and you're also, every time you're doing this, you're, you're taking some You're taking material away. off. Yeah. yeah. So yep. you're, you, it's got a built-in life. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you get to it. Not is, a problem. You're going to do watch. it next. Oh, good, good God. You don't want that. I'm going to smear it around. Do, you're I'll, up. I'll do this right? side, yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me get it around. Okay, boss, here we right, go. So I'm going I'm to come over where you are because okay. I am also right. Actually, no, I'm, I'm going to stay on this side Okay. because I am right-handed. So you're telling me I want to keep even pressure across the entire face of this. That's right. Here, you can look. Hold on. You can look like a pro. Oh, yeah, with the shoulder. Uh -huh. Look at that. This is, this is like, uh, like, like when Henry Rollins wraps the mic cord around yeah, his the hand same a couple thing. times. Yeah, yeah exactly, same. yeah. There we go. So make sure you start it with it on the, on the car flat okay. and keep it there. Okay, so that's that's what happens when I try and do my Yeah, everybody car. starts up here and then they right, right, and then they put place, it down, yeah. right. So just mild, light pressure. We're gonna go from here up. Mm -hmm. It's about this line here. That's all we're doing. So you're gonna go back and forth and then you're gonna go up and down next. Okay. To the area you just did, you go over again. Slow your hand speed a little bit. There you well, go. I had a nickel for every time I heard that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not saying it to yourself this time. Yeah. So one, one thing I've noticed about these foam pads yep. is you can... You actually get a really nice feel for the surface, where, right. whereas if, if you're using, like I've used those uh, those woolly pads before, yeah. it feels like you, you don't really have good contact with the surface. This gives you a nice um, approximation of what's actually going on at the surface. You can feel the little bit of resistance. You, yep. can, you can feel things moving Exactly, and, and the softer pads especially. Yeah. Put it back on the car. All right. Now watch this. Go ahead, turn it on. Okay. I'm gonna turn you up a little bit. Oh, good God. Okay. And then watch. Oh. You still can't burn it. Yeah. <laughs> now slow your hand speed again. You want to develop a little bit of heat. You keep the buffer flat. You're tilting it. You want to keep it nice and flat okay. up here. So, so this this seems like the trickiest part where you're breaking from one surface again the soft onto pad, another surface. The soft pad gives you that feel. So if you it, 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 even as you when you put the pressure on there and push it down, even if I were to increase pressure as I broke over this edge a little bit, mm -hmm. it's not going to really really burn burn anything up too much. No, it's really hard to do with an orbital. Yeah. That's why we use them, and that's why they're nice for home use. You know, because you really can't. It's hard to mess up your car with it. I didn't bring any wax, but typically that's what we would do next, is just simply put a coat of wax on it. But you can see we've gotten a lot of gloss now and a much better finish. 
Just seeing it. Yeah, everybody's uh, commenting on my oh, I'm sure you're, my hand speed. Yes, yes and you're. Uh, my, I, I'm an autocrosser. I, I, I tend to move in, in jerky. Slow down, you go faster. Motion. You should know exactly. that. Isn't that the golden rule? Okay, so let's let's look at a couple of specific problems on on this car, and that's sure. That's so basically, this is ready for, for wax. wax now at this point. Yep. And what what's your feel? So. We just need a wax. We don't need a wax polish, a wax cleaner. We just need a straight up straight wax. Straight up wax. Uh, for a street car like this, I even like some of the new poly waxes that are out there, like NXT and, or uh, Grios Poly or any of those. They're synthetic waxes. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of guys are going to ceramics too, which I'm using a lot of uh, on more modern cars. I don't use it too much on the restored cars. It's mm -hmm. not really necessary. But even on my own personal car, I use a ceramic finish. What that does is uh, you don't have to wax it for years at a time. Awesome. Hey, and, oh, I, I'm going to blow your mind later. Uh -oh. uh, I learned a, an amazing detail trick just this past week. I, I had a, I had a, um, actually just traded it on Sunday for a, for a brand new Nissan Leaf. Uh, I had a, a, a ProMaster van that mm -hmm. had a lot of black plastic trim on it. Yes. And I had, it would, like, like this, I, I think I want to work on this next because this trim yeah. is obviously faded. Sure. But uh, I, I, I would wax the car and I'd have all kinds of wax residue on the, um, on the, on, black, on trim. the black plastic trim. What's, how do you get that off? Depends. I know now. Okay, well, I, how would I get it off? Yeah. Uh, I use things like Prepsol and stuff like that. I've used alcohol, I've used, I've used that too. Yes, this but, was, oh God, what did I do wrong? You know, no, that's okay, yeah. it's the wrong color, but that's okay. Uh, well, yeah, they, 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 didn't, they didn't have the, uh, the gum ones at Dollar General. Yeah. So this was all I had. So I go to Hobby Lobby yeah. and get white ones or get the uh, kneadable ones because they work even better. Okay. So I've used this trick before, but on, a lot of times that stuff's really embedded in there. And uh, WD-40. Oh, really? Yep. Cool. Uh, but what an eraser is great for is uh, headliners. Oh, really? Yeah, everything. Well, first of all, you should know that like Alcantara, which is so popular today. It's basically a rayon plastic. It's not yeah, I know. Yeah. And uh, so you can use almost anything on Alcantara, which really is nice. But I, I discovered this, a friend of mine was, uh, was an upholsterer and he did, uh, uh, well, hard to, uh, again, 300 SL in, uh, headliners, a white cloth. And he always had marks, always had handprints. You go in there with a white eraser and it takes them right off. It's amazing how the thing works. I've never touched my I've never touched my headliner. Yeah. What's, what's he, what's no footprints there? up there? No, God no. Check it. All right, Tim, take a break real quick. I gotta yep. I gotta pay some bills here. When we come back, sure. we're gonna do black trim next and then move into the interior. Folks, are you having a good time? If so, uh, do me a favor if you're if you're watching on Facebook, which you're not because Facebook is super broken tonight. Oh, but sorry. if you should be watching on Facebook no. at some later time, or if you go to our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash grassroots motorsports. Make sure to give us a like, make sure to share the content whenever possible. Well, that is like that, the engine that social media runs on these Can days, and we definitely appreciate that. Yeah. If you're watching over here on YouTube, we've got a good crowd on YouTube tonight. Please do me a favor and subscribe to our channel. It's not super annoying. We don't send you a lot of notices or anything. You will just be first in line when new videos go up. You will hear about those before anybody else does. And as soon as we go live on YouTube, you will get a notification mm -hmm. for that. So please do subscribe to our channel. Also, if you could spare a thought for the people that make this show possible, talking about our friends from CRC Industries. We got a whole big sassy shelf of CRC stuff back there. Chris, give me a, give me a quick, uh, quick uh, a Hitchcock style dolly zoom on that. Actually, can't really dolly zoom. Just give me a straight, straight zoom on that. That is our shelf of CRC stuff. That is our go-to shelf. Actually, if you go behind the, uh, the front can on that entire shelf, uh, you will see a lot of handprints, a lot of, a lot of greasy paw prints because that is stuff that we use all the time here in the shop. It is great stuff. And even better than that, they support this world that we live in. Shows like this, magazines like Grassroots Motorsports, events like the $2,000 Challenge and great race teams and great series all over the place. Also, I am being, uh, I'm, yes, I'm being shown a note that I totally remembered as they started to show me that note. We are hiring at Grassroots Motorsports Magazine, actually our newest, uh, our newest acquisition. Um, our friend Mark is here, new addition to the sales department. We have more openings in the sales department and we have openings in the editorial department. Here's what you do to apply. I need you to come by my house with a plate of ribs. Should those ribs prove to be satisfactory, you will then move on to phase two of the process whereby you will fill out an application and do it just like a, um, 
normal job application. I want you to go to grassrootsmotorsports.com slash employment, right? Tom, grassroots, yes, grassrootsmotorsports.com slash employment. We are throwing a, uh, a link up there. So if you are interested in working in the editorial department or in the sales department, we have openings right now. We are, uh, we are growing because of shows like this, because of Classic Motorsports Magazine, because of Grassroots Motorsports Magazine, because of the great events that we put on, like Jerem Experience at Daytona every year, like the Ultimate Track Car Challenge, like the $2,000 Challenge coming up in October in Gainesville. We'd love to welcome you to the team. And uh, let me see if, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. J says phase three is cleaning the birdcage. That's actually, that actually comes, comes later. That is, that is part of the, uh, the retention process. That's not really the audition process. Uh, barbecue smoker challenge. Uh, Calvin wants to know, are you required to be in Florida? Boy, uh, if you, the answer is yes unless you can convince us that you can do it somewhere other than Florida and we are going to be hard to convince. But uh, do not let the fact that you are not in Florida prevent you from applying to the, to the job, but understand that um, that is where our offices are and uh, it will be a difficult process for both of us. So there will have to be something else. They, they, they better be good ribs if you're not gonna be in Florida. So also, uh, before we, we get too far off on this, please remember our friends at Coney Shocks, Coney-NA.com on the web. Also available, great outlets like uh, Tire Rack and directly from, from Coney. I, I'm gonna kill those guys if they don't send me those discount codes soon. If you need shocks for anything, whether it be a sports car, a race car, uh, your truck, family cruiser, or whether it be a bridge or a train, Coney has shocks. Yes, Coney has even has shocks for the Porsche Boxster. Do we have Coney's on the way for this? We have Coney's on the way for the Porsche Boxster already. So that will be appearing in the magazine before too long. So I would, I'm so, I'm so proud that I found out about the eraser <laughs> trick. And Tim, he, Tim's actually back there talking to, uh, to other Tim about, about how impressed he was with me for, for knowing the eraser trick. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, I'm going over, uh, going over the questions here, make sure we didn't miss anything. If you have a question, throw it up in the YouTube chat. In the meantime, Tim McNair, get back over here and let's, let's get back into it. So let's talk about, about black trim next because every car these days has a, a ton of this black trim and especially here in Florida where it's just getting bombarded with ultraviolet and, and salt air, it, it chalks up sure. very quickly. So how do we deal with that? Well, we're actually really fortunate to have one that did exactly yeah. that. So this this gray, as we're seeing here, hopefully you can see that. Uh, the gray here and this sort of darker gray, it was actually black at one time. Uh, now, one thing I can at least give this credit for is it does seem to have, it's faded consistently. It's, it's that is of, true. It's sort of consistently oxidized over its entire surface. Exactly, although we were hit by a pterodactyl earlier <laughs> in the week, so I didn't really work on that just yet. But I'll give you an idea, something like this, Whereas this incredibly faded, there are a lot of products out today, um, mostly called uh, rejuvenators, or refinishers, or that sort of thing. Um, I picked up a, a product from McGuire's earlier today um, that I used. This stuff worked really well. So basically, it's uh, Ultimate Black. It's their plastic restorer. But the idea is uh, just to put on enough to, uh, to recolor it. And it basically, it doesn't tint anything, but it just adds moisture back into the plastic. What I like to do with any of these rejuvenators is to put it on and let it set. Don't even go back after it, but we're going to, for, for camera purposes tonight, you can actually see how it's changing the color quite dramatically. This is all that's required, too. So it really it, isn't too much effort to this stuff. But you're, are you, are you altering the, the surface there, or are you just sort of hiding and moisturizing the, the imperfections. Well, it just appears to be hiding and moisturizing. The nice stuff is if it's a, if it's a product that's listed as a protectant, okay. uh, in other words, your 303s, your dressings, let's say, they typically go on, they wash off. Rejuvenators or things like this product, what do they call um, uh, restorers, they tend to really bite in and stay for and a long for period a of time. Of exactly, and, and that's what we want. Uh, if I were doing this car professionally, I would probably have these wipers off. I would do this entire piece 
and just let it sit. Then maybe go back and do 50 other things and come back to it later and maybe buff it off. Just take off any excess that would be on there. But you can see how dramatic the finish is. So we yeah, can, and, and it, it, it's not really... It took a minute. You're, but you're never going to be able to, to essentially polish that piece the way you are with this to actually change the surface. Right. The next, so you're just hiding it, but you may as well use something that hides it for a longer period of time. For a longer time. period of time, yeah. right. The alternative is to simply remove all the plastic pieces and respray them. Right. You can spray them black or dark gray or whatever you want to do. Maybe paint them red. Who knows? But that's about the only other thing you could do, well, besides replacing it, of yeah. course, with new. But again, this is just old. It's a very heavy rubber here. But it's the same process. And uh, to this point, too, I just want to mention something. Um, we, had, we had a little discussion earlier about products that we use uh, after a track event. So as an example, uh, seeing this rubber reminded me. We've got a, a product here from Driven, the uh, Speed Clean. But there are a couple of these on the market. There's another one that I use called uh, Spartan SD20. And basically, when you get uh, all those little rubber flecks all over the side of the car, Basically, this stuff is phenomenal. You spray it on, and it just literally just washes away. And that's that stuff's actually great if you have a car that's been wrapped as well. Exactly. You can't really wax a wrapped car. You can. Oh, oh my God. Oh yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. In fact, I do a lot of uh, a lot of modern cars. Almost everything modern we uh, is wrapped these days. Uh, I don't I don't know of any GT3 RS that's not, uh, but they're always wrapped and. You can polish the wraps now. You can wax the wraps. There's even ceramic coatings for wraps. Very cool. But um, it depends on the wrap. It has to be a very high quality wrap. The new stuff from things like Expel and stuff like that. And a lot of them are self-healing as well. So if you get a minor mark in it, you can take a heat gun and melt them out. Very, very cool. But again, getting back to this real yeah. quick, brought it right back up again. Uh, all right. Uh, and Dave is saying uh, that's easier than he's... That his go-to, which is peanut butter, which um, I've heard peanut it, butter, it, olive oil yeah. is another well, big one. Sure, because it's, it's problem it, is it works, it does yeah. work, but it goes rancid. Exactly, and, and then, then and then you, then got, you have mold to continue with, and then the scent and everything else. And seagulls following yeah. you. And, and exactly. Crap. So I want to move into the interior next, but uh, somebody asked about headlight polishing. Yes. Um, which is obviously a, a problem on on modern cars too, with a lot sure. of this this polycarbonate glass area in the mm -hmm. front that's just exposed. To, to everything the wind has to offer and, and all this UV, so. Right, so a couple things. We're, again, very fortunate because most Boxsters, these are already cloudy and ready to be restored. So if it becomes completely cloudy and needs to be restored, there are a thousand new headlight restorations that are out there, they're very simple to use. Some require some sanding, but if you have a, a small electric drill, that's all it needs, and just take your time, mask off, Make sure this is the most important thing. Mask off the entire area around it, so that way if you miss when sanding or polishing, you don't take your yeah. paint off. But it's, it's really just a very simple process. And I would recommend, if, if, you, if your headlights are not difficult to get out, I, I, my favorite way to do it is- Best way to do it is take, take them out. out. Put them on the, do it on the drill press. They should all be 993s. Yeah. Porsche yeah. 993 has a lever inside that you pull and the assembly comes out yeah. like, like that. Yeah, or Chevy Silverado trucks are nearly as easy. Exactly. Which I think the 993 actually took its inspiration from Probably. the Chevy Silverado truck, yeah. No, oh, Porsche, engineering, I don't think yeah. they would do anything like that. <laughs> uh, but ours aren't too bad. So like something like these, we use, uh, this is Meguiar's Plastax. Yeah, I can see it's a basic bit, plastic polish. A little bit of a smear up here. Yeah, there's, the, the, more importantly, this has like a, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, stone chips and pock marks and stuff. Yeah, so, but something like this will just make make you look like a hero basically when you clean it, and and this is really all there is to it. Now I could do this with the buffer as well. I would use a soft black pad like we're doing with polish, and then just simply, you know, you brush it on and wipe it off. But I mean, that just improved the clarity about ten percent. Okay, that's that's right great there. and it's better. But now we have this sort of raw, unprotected surface. Is yep. there anything we can do to that? But, you know, besides putting like a, a clear film on it, well, there are, is, there, is there any chemical prep that we can do to that to k help keep it from just reoxidizing right away? Yes, uh, everybody who makes the polishing kits also makes a, re a, a now a film that or a, it's a coating that goes on top, and it's okay. just wipe on, wipe off. And there's several different. If you're using say Meguiar's or 3M or whatever, that's what you want to stick with. Stick with the same like quality. But most of the kits have that in them now. So awesome. Yep. Okay, so let's move it in the interior. Sure. And and, and, and while while we are, let me let me ask you this. I don't want to, I don't want to put you on the spot too much. Okay. But you don't have to mention any names, but give me 
what what's the bull crap out there right now? What like if if, if somebody's telling you a product oh, does, no, does no, no. something, what 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 can we not do? Okay. The biggest <coughs> the biggest myth is paint correction. Okay. This is now the catch-all. So you're getting companies out there, detailers out there. I'm probably going to get a lot of trouble for this, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> no, but let's know a secret. Nobody's watching this. That's all. That's just it. Yeah, yeah, just that. So basically, what people are doing are these rest, these detail shops is they're they're actually color sanding and buffing cars, and new cars to take out some of the orange peel. Okay. So that the paint is completely flat. This is what they're calling paint correction, and it's sort of a catch-all. They charge a lot of money to do this process, and it, really what it's doing is just, you know, shortening the life of your paint. Yeah. If you have a new Porsche or a new Mercedes, they have orange peel. That's the way the Germans paint them. If you have a new Ferrari, they're, hopefully it is painted. Uh, there have been a lot of problems recently with their paint, but what I'm finding, though, is that everybody wants to do this paint correction process, and it's usually eight to ten steps, and they charge thousands and thousands of dollars. Don't fall into the trap. Uh, I can give you a really interesting example. Um, I did a seminar uh, for McGuire's a couple of years ago at, at Amelia, and uh, we talked about paint correction and how this company was online and they had a new 458 at the time, black one. And they walked around the car with a paint meter and they measured the thickness of the paint on every panel. They came up with an average, which was something like seven mil. So let me just put it in perspective. A paint meter measures the entire thickness of material from the metal out. Okay. So it could be three mils of primer and one mil of clear at the top or whatever. You don't know how much each step is. Okay. Typically these cars are primed, base coat, clear coat, so you've got at least three steps there. But you don't know how much is clear and how much is color. Well their idea was to make them all the same depth. So they went with this average number of seven and they sanded every panel until they were all seven all the way around the car. But you don't know, again, <laughs> It could have, some panels could have, had, yeah. had no clear, oh. and some had tons of clear. You don't know. And you're only sanding the clear part, because you, once you hit the color, you're done. But I just thought it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, because yeah. they just shortened the guys, this, the life of this paint to nothing for his brand new Ferrari. It didn't have any orange peel in it, though. <laughs> Charged him a fortune. Oh, so to continue the story, I said this, this, it had just happened. It was on the internet, one of those uh, detailing sites. That's the other thing. Don't go on detailing sites. Um, they, um, and with, when I finished the story, these two guys got up and left. And I said, well, that was interesting. So at the end of the show, um, the guys from McGuire's came over to me and said, remember you talking about that Ferrari? I said, yeah. I said, well, those are the two guys that did it. Oh, God. I was like, whoops. <laughs> Were they waiting for you in the parking lot? Were no, they, but yeah. well, give it. So, all right. So, so anyway, let's moving take, on. Take, take Sorry. us inside. You, set us up. I'm going to go check, see, see if we've got any, any questions. Sure. Uh, so, moving into the inside of this, let me uh, get some light in here. Uh, one of the things you find with, with these cars um, of this period, so this is early 2000s and late 90s, early 2000s, uh, BMW, Porsche, and Ferrari in particular, Ferrari is the worst, uh, they use this paint that was applied to plastic and it has a sort of rubberized feel to it that for lack of a better explanation. What happens is over time and if you use a, a protectant on it something like an armor all or any kind of those things. It gets, it gets sticky. It gets very point. very sticky exactly. So this has the same affliction. So these rocker panels are very sticky. Uh, the In particular we, we have the cup holders here that were sticky and I did clean one off and I, the other one is still gooey. Um, to do it properly, to take, you need to take the parts out of the car, but the process is actually very simple. And there are companies out there that do this as a professional courtesy. You can, well, not as a courtesy, but of course, you have to pay through the nose to get it done. But you take all your pieces off, you send it to them, they strip them, they refinish them, and you're ready to go back in the car, which okay. is a great way to do it. But a lot of it, like these, since we only had really the cup holders and these rockers, you can do them at home. Surprisingly, the easiest thing to use it on, now those, the cup holders in this car have a sort of a, an outside bezel that snaps off and then it has four screws to take the assembly out of the car. And if you, you can see. Yeah, you can, you can definitely feel. Hopefully you can see one or the other. This one is. The one still has the actual. Kind of gooey and gross and, and you clean right. this one up quite well. We did lose the graphic on it. That's the only thing. But uh, there is a method coming out soon that'll be able to replace that. But 
they are your cup holders and I'd rather have the graphic on and, and no gooey. Yeah. But uh, since they're really easy to take out, I, you just take them out of the car and of all things you use the inexpensive purple power or um, some of the Simple citrus, green, no, like a, citrus degreaser, the okay. orange stuff that you get at Home Depot is the best stuff to use. It cuts right through this. It takes the goo off. And then a lot of times they'll need to be refinished. So there's a bunch of refinishing materials. I, I picked up some stuff from one of the paint companies today. It may have been Duplicolor. I use SEM as the other one. They're big, but it's made specifically for plastic. And semi-gloss black is all you need. Okay. You mist it on very light coats until you build color. And that's all you need to do. Don't spray it heavy like you're painting the car with it. So strip it off with a degreaser, spray over it, and you're good to go. Surprisingly, it's really simple. So what else do we do we look at when we're sort of evaluating an, an interior? You mentioned carpet being being painted. I, I do see it looks like there's a little bit of fading in the carpet here where the sun has been able to hit it harder you know, versus behind behind the seats. Well, I, I think I think again we look for things that are being masked. Okay. So if a car is this has 65,000 miles on it, so the steering wheel should be worn. The shift knob shows wear patterns too, which you know that's what's important. If it has to be consistent with the look, you know. And of course, you know, if the guy, if the person who owned it maintained it and, and maybe did some of that leather touch up and that sort of thing to keep it going, you'll still f have a general feel like it'll, it'll look worn but touched up. When it looks completely fake, that's what, that should be a clue. So once everything's clean and you're, you're kind of prepping the interior to, you know, even for a daily driver or mm -hmm. something, one of the things, and I, I I live on a dirt road, so I'm dealing with dust constantly. Mm -hmm. And and even even if I keep my, my windows closed, it seems like my interiors get get fairly dusty. So I'm always trying to strike that balance between I want to, I, I want things to be nice and shiny. I want to sure. use a product on stuff to make it shiny. That stuff also seems to be a bit of a dust magnet, though. Well, I, do, do I do I move? Do I sue the city to pave my road? <laughs> well, uh, or well, is there of course you do. I can use well, to yeah. No, you step up and have a paved, JD. Yeah. I mean, maybe something in Belgian block or, you yeah, know, whatever yeah, you, I think so, yeah. whatever you can afford. Um, Some FIA curbing, maybe. Of know, course. You know. But, well, actually, uh, I think the uh, these detailing companies or these chemical companies have heard what you're saying because most of them have just come out with interior detailers. Okay. Some are aerosol, some are squirt on, whatever. Um, and uh, they have anti-static ingredients now, so it keeps the dust down low. One thing I will not give you is the shine. Uh, so it'll be a more natural look. It'll look like the plastic was when it was delivered, not greased up like it was in the 70s when you put that product on it that made it slippery and you couldn't sit on a seat anymore. Yeah. Um, but the stuff, it really works well. In fact, it, it cuts down detailing time on a car. It's relatively clean. Um, I have three or four clients that I do their cars three to four times a year and the interior detailers have cut my time down considerably. Very cool. I can spray it on a towel and wipe and it comes up really, really nice. All right, we got to start wrapping stuff up. But sure. before we go, I want to do a couple of things. First off, uh, I would like to play a quick round of What's It Way presented by Intercomp. Every couple of weeks, we throw something on our Intercomp wireless scales. You at home get to guess the weight, whoever comes closest. Without going over, you're going to win some fabulous prizes from the GRM prize stash. So uh, I, I guess, yeah, since we're just on YouTube tonight, go ahead and start throwing your guesses up now. Tom, I'll let you get it in into position to throw it up there. We will drop it on the intercom scale in just a couple of minutes. So, uh, Tim, while we're getting the car up up in the air a little bit to get it uh, get the scales under it, first off, let's, let's check and see if we have any good questions that we've... Uh, We've, we've missed, yeah, so, so talk a little bit about, about geographical um, y uniqueness of some of these problems. I, I live down a dirt road, but somebody that lives in Michigan might have to deal with stuff, stuff like salt mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, or, or in, in the Midwest, they, I don't know, they got the corn under their car. But, well, I'm in Philly, so, so yeah, I yeah, deal with so salt all the time. But salt, so what are, what are some of the... Yeah, I mean, getting obviously back to that, that's awful, obviously. what we talked about earlier, you know, most of the cars I, I work on anymore are mostly garage cleans or just uh, if I do race cars, they're right off the track and they're gorgeous to begin with. And you have to remove rubber and dust and grease, but not a whole lot more dirt than anything. Uh, I have a lot of cars, too, that pick up, suck up stones like you wouldn't believe, you know, some of the McLaren stuff or some of the race car stuff I deal with. Um, but 
you know, in those environments, you really have to turn to, uh, I personally use a pressure washer. That's the best thing to do. They're so inexpensive today. They're a hundred yeah. bucks. You can get a great one to do your wheel wells, mostly. You want to get in there, just blast everything in sight and get it clean. So talk to me a little bit about about car washes. Sure. Uh, it, oh, mechanical car, like yeah, drive-through like, car washes? Drive-through car washes. It, it, <laughs> We all don't drive McLarens, obviously. Sure. And sometimes it's nice to run, run well, your car okay, through so a car Well, okay, so I have a 2017 Audi Allroad. Yeah. That's ceramic coated. Okay. Goes to the car wash every two weeks. How do how do I? Because do I, I don't have time to wash right. my own car, so and I never I, will. How do I evaluate <laughs> a mechanical car wash? We have a couple here in town. The newer, the better. Okay, so is that basically like is soft cloth? You, well, you're very fortunate. You're in Florida. Yeah. You know, if we're if we're in PA and. You know, you go to a car wash that's a year or two, two years old. It's the middle of winter. It's February. We've already had two snowstorms with heavy salt. Yeah, they're the days you want to stay yeah. away from it. You know, but, uh, you know, I only do it because it's convenient and I don't have time to play with my own stuff. But, I mean, if you do it once, twice a year. Not going to hurt. Yeah, oh, no, thank, no, it depends thank you, on what you want to do, you know, and, I, or how I, often I, you drive your car, too. Yeah. All right, everything's switched on. I will switch on our uh, intercomp scales here. We will zero them out. Can I sit in it? Add three thousand pounds to it? No. All right, uh, Tim. How much gas is in this thing? Uh, it's just under half. Just under half a tank of gas. Two thousand one Boxster. S. Boxster S. Uh, what's it, what's anything in the, in the in the trunk? Anything? There's a pack of gum and some sunglasses. There's a pack of gum and some sunglasses in the box and a bag of weed. How uh, like a we talking uh, uh, Peter Tosh or Peter or Tosh. yeah okay. So uh, we, we it looks like everything's on. I will pull the safety over here. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> except for Firefest. They're they're, they're still yeah. in. Okay. Bring her down, Tom. Uh, the number is climbing. And the number has has settled. We are down on the intercomp wireless scales. Uh, we do, let's take a look up there. We got some folks that are really, really close. I'm going to tell you that uh, this Boxster S is under 3,000 pounds. You were, you were right. Um, we, and actually, usually we weigh the car before the show, and so we know, because uh, it's all just Hollywood, Hollywood bull crap anyway. But this time, we, we don't. So we are finding this out now. But it, this car is under 3,000 pounds. It is, uh, let's see, Carl, you're a little bit low. Timo, Steve, both you guys are a little bit closer. This car is 2,900 and 81 pounds. Oh, John is close. David, was anybody closer than John at 2915? Boy, Carl Owen, some people were close but over. Um, wow, somebody said 29,000 pounds. <laughs> 1,883 pounds. That might be a little off. Mark, you were, you were, <laughs> yeah. your, your excitement got the, got the best of you. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure out uh, who won this week's edition of What's It Way, presented by Intercomp. And we will uh, know everybody's typing too fast now. 298. So, yeah, 2,980, 81 pounds. And Nick? Nick Comstock, I think. We'll, we'll, we'll let the judges check. We will, yeah, we, we, will, we will go back through and we will, we will figure out uh, who, who won. And uh, we'll, we'll actually, we'll. So, Nick had 2936. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty close. Yeah, Nick, shoot, shoot me an email, jg at grassroots motorsports. Dot com and we will get you um, we will get you prized up my friends all right that's it that's the show uh, thank you very much Tim McNair Grand Prix Concours preparation Tim thanks for coming down my thanks pleasure. for showing us some of these great tips we will see you again next week everybody next week schedule change we are on Tuesday next week with an Acura NSX I think pretty sure We've got to call those guys back and make sure we are still on the schedule somehow we got shifted onto the press car schedule for an Acura NSX, so we are going to give you a, uh, a comprehensive road test and a very close look at that car next week. Maybe even have some guests on from the Acura factory racing program 
Very excited to take a closer look at that car on Tuesday. So schedule change. Hey, you would know about the schedule change if you texted GRM Live to 31996. We'll send you updates. We'll send you guest information. Never going to send you any commercials or uh, sell that to anybody just for us to get the word out about what's going on with the show. You can also go to grassrootsmotorsports.com, subscribe to our newsletter. Every day we'll send out a newsletter from the magazine. There's great stuff in it. Um, not only information about the live show, what's coming up in the print version of Grassroots Motorsports, but stories from the archive. Uh, yes, actual content, actual editorial. Sometimes we'll throw something in the newsletter that we couldn't fit in the magazine. So you get content that's only available through that newsletter. Just go to grassrootsmotorsports.com, scroll to the bottom, sign up for the newsletter. And again, we do not sell that list to anybody. It's just a list that we use to communicate with our readers and viewers. Thank you very much, Tim McNair. Thanks to David Wallens working in social media. Thanks to Chris behind the camera. Thanks to Tim and Tom Suttered for bringing their new acquisition over. I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting, getting more information about, uh, about this thing and doing a little Boxster Buyer's Guide in the coming months on the show because um, it, th this, this looks good in my shop, by the way. Especially <laughs> 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 Get in line. I am getting, I'm getting those feelings. Um, I, I get it now. So we'll see you again next week. Thanks very much to the folks from CRC Industries on the web at crcindustries.com. Even better, in a major retailer near you, please support the folks that support the endeavors that we undertake. Events like our $2,000 challenge, shows like this, magazines like Grassroots Motorsports and Classic Motorsports, and our friends from Coney Shocks on the web at coney-na.com and available wherever you buy high-performance shock absorbers or shock absorbers for like bridges and trains. They make everything. Let's uh, take one quick, and thanks to every, all you guys that bailed off of Facebook tonight, figured it out, came over to YouTube. We really appreciate that. Facebook is having some technical issues. We appreciate you making the trip over here means a lot to us that you, uh, you, you came over. Yeah, Dave is saying he uh, normally watches on, on Facebook and is glad to have the backup. We are glad to have the backup tonight as well. And shout out to Katie, who is homesick tonight. Hopefully she'll be back next week. That's it, folks. Good night, everybody. We will see you again next Tuesday, special night and time. Text GRM Live to 31996. We'll remind you about that special night and time. In the meantime, I am JG Pastor Jack. Good night, everybody. <laughs>